Hi, it's Cadet here, and this is part one of the NanoFX conversion tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the steps necessary uh, to convert your Bridge Commander models so that they are compatible with the NanoFX viewer. The first part of the tutorial is the necessary programs and tools that you're going to need for the conversion process. Obviously, number one is NanoFX viewer. The second one would be NIF Scope. Um, it's a free program. Blender, which is also free, I use version 2.49b, which seems to um, give me the best results. I've tried 2.66 using this process and I just get very unreliable results. Photoshop or another comprehensive uh, image editing suite such as GIMP or something like that. Um, I use Photoshop CS5 and with that I use the NVIDIA Development Toolkit, um, which includes the DDS file type plugin and it also includes the normal map filter um, for creating normal textures. Those are the necessary programs that uh, you will have to have in order to complete this process. Some optional programs would be the Bridge Commander Universal Tool um, that's for opening and unpacking BC Mod files. Some kind of um, archiving program like WinRAR um, Windows natively will handle zip files, um, but for ACE and 7-zip, etc., stuff like that, you'll need WinRAR. And a basic uh, text editing program such as uh, Notepad. So that covers the basics, so make sure you have all those programs downloaded. The All the download links are provided in the video description below. So go ahead and get all those programs installed, and then we'll carry on with the conversion process. Okay, so now we're ready to begin with the uh, conversion process. The first thing you need to do is download a Bridge Commander add-on, um, such as a ship or a station or whatever you'd like. I downloaded um, this Type 9 shuttlecraft. Um, I downloaded it from the same website, um, actually, that you would download um, the Bridge Commander Universal tool from. So once you've downloaded and extracted the archive, um, you're going to have some pretty basic information. Um, it's probably going to be located under a bunch of subfolders like Bridge Commander, um, model ships, etc., etc. Um, some ships that you convert, you may want to retain some of the sound effects that are located under the under the sound effects folder um, because you can recycle those for use in um, Nano Effects Viewer. You can assign custom sounds to uh, your different ships and stuff. So basically what you want to break it down to is the textures. So here's all the basic uh, textures that go with the Type 9 shuttle and of course the model file that's in a NIF format here. So we have NIF, NIF scope installed and it should automatically associate um, the NIF extension with the program. So I should be able to just double click on that and it'll bring it up in NIF scope. Um, at the time of this uh, tutorial this is the uh, the most recent uh, edition of NIF scope. So basically it's going to bring your model in um, and if the textures are located in the same folder um, then it'll render the textures as well and basically show you what you're going to be working with. So here we have the Type 9 shuttle. So it's a fairly uh, fairly decent model it's not super high poly, but um, it doesn't need to be because it's a small craft and uh, you're not really going to be eyeballing this and, and blowing it up to, to huge detail within the viewer. So the only thing you need to do in NIF scope when, once you open the, um, the NIF file is click anywhere out around here in the black area in the void because what that's going to do is unselect or deselect um, any objects that may be selected. So just click anywhere, you'll see a slight change in some of the, the lines there, though, just to represent that they're not highlighted. And that's it. So go to File, Export, and select the object type. And just click OK to ignore the errors. And the same with the texture property dialog that came up when we first uh, opened the file. Just close that because it's not important. So it, this program should default to the working directory that we're in. So here's my working directory and just name your file. We're going to name this one Type 9. 
and save. It's a very quick process, it's already done. So, now back in our working directory we have a new, two new files. One's not really important, but um, this is the one we want, which is the object file. So in order to view that, we're going to open up Blender. So, Blender 2.49b. If you're not familiar with Blender, um, you do need to remove this silly cube um, that comes up every time. I think there's an option to get rid of it, but anyways, just hit the leader X to get this uh, option, erase selected objects. Go to File, Import, you will need Python uh, installed in order to uh, to utilize all the import functions and uh, choose wavefront object. <coughs> okay, so to streamline this process a little bit, go back to your working directory um, in your Windows Explorer window, go up to the address bar and copy the address location um, because Blender doesn't have a very intuitive user interface and the search, the, the exploring function of it is pretty pretty rudimentary and not very helpful. So now you can paste your address in the location bar here and that'll take us right to our working directory where you can select your object. Click it and then select import wavefront and in the import options you just want to select smooth groups and you want to s select the object for the separate objects type and import. And there we have it. Scroll the mouse to zoom in. And there's our model. The only thing we need to do in Blender is change the orientation. As you can see, it's upside down. So, object, transform, rotate on axis, and select the Z, or for the Americans, the Z axis. Hold the control key while you're rotating to get precise increments of 5 degrees so that you can rotate it exactly 180 degrees from original. Click the mouse to save the transformation and that's it. So go to File, Export, and choose the DirectX file type. And in the DirectX exporter you want to make sure you have the Flip the Z selected and just click export all and again we're gonna paste control V our working directory into the address bar and we're gonna name this type 9.x hit enter and enter again and there we go it's that quick so I'll click exit close blender so we now have a new file type and it's called type 9.x so we have converted from a bridge commander file into a nano effects viewer compatible model type so you can delete the object files and the original NIF file because we no longer need those so we are just about ready to bring this into the NanoFX viewer. There's just one more step we need to do, and that's create a new folder and name it Hi. And copy, move, excuse me, all of your textures into that folder. Now, the naming structure um, that the NanoFX viewer relies on um, is that the file, the model file name, must match exactly the parent folder name that it's located under. So for instance, I named my shuttle just type 9 and so I need to rename the parent folder to match that exactly. So type 9. And that's it. So now we can move this from wherever we're working into our models directory under Federation and Shuttles and there we go. So, let's go ahead and open up NanoFX Viewer. Okay, so Control-L to 
load the object, so Federation, shuttles, and there it is, type 9. So load the object, close the window, and there we go. So there's our model. So it's in its most basic form. There's nothing special about it, um, but it is in the viewer. And it looks like it's upright the right, correct way, and all the textures seem to be intact. Okay, perfect. So, as you can see, the texturing of the ship obviously leaves a lot to be desired. It's uh, got a very uniform and consistent sheen to it. Um, basically looks like we're looking at a paper model. Um, so we're going to want to play with some of the textures and uh, improve the appearance. But as far as part one goes for the tutorial, that does at least bring you to a state of having a usable model in NanoFX Viewer. In part two, we will cover um, texture editing and texture creation um, in order to get our normal maps and our illumination maps that will give us our glowing nacelles and uh, other components that we want to have a glow and illuminated effect. So stay tuned and check out part two.